Welcome everyone. We'll be beginning in about one minute. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Welcome. Welcome to the premiere of Art Innovation Talks. These 45 minute edu educational Zoom presentations are being offered to our ISEMA members exclusively. They're all about inspiring educational opportunities that we want to provide all our members. So I hope you enjoy it, your, your, the, the Zoom presentation. So um, uh, the ISCA, um, these topics are all art related. Um, they're all created to um, enhance and enliven our members' creative journeys. So before I introduce our fabulous presenter today, Jenny Bateman, I'd like to first introduce two of our ISEA members who have volunteered today to make this Zoom presentation possible. Haley Joseph will be our moderator today and she'll be collecting all of your questions from our chat room. And April Rimpo, who's working hard behind the scenes managing this Zoom session. So before we, I would like to thank them and the entire Art Innovation Committee. So before we begin, Haley will take care of some housekeeping tips and um, share with you how you can present your questions to Jenny through our chat room. Haley, welcome. Hi. Hello, friends. First of all, please know that your mics have been muted. This allows for everyone to listen more clearly and to, for all of us to uh, avoid hearing any of those potentially annoying noise, background noises. To ask Jenny a question, please simply go to the chat option, which may be found at the upper right-hand corner of your screen within the three dots or along the bottom of the Zoom screen if you're using a PC. Please type your question and hit send. I'll be collecting your questions and we'll present them after Jenny's presentation. I'll try to have all of your questions answered, but we're also monitoring the time, so we might not get to all of them. To optimize your viewing experience, please go to the top right corner of your screen and click the speaker view option. Thank you, Haley. And now it's time to introduce to you, Jenny Bateman, gifted artist, dynamic business leader, educator, art coach, and signature member of ISCA. She's going to share with you, she's going to share with you how she fell in love with the ancient and complex art of silk painting and how over a lifetime she's experimented with the traditional media of this use, of, of this traditional media of this um, painting to use in her work creatively and to create her ever evolving, beautiful, exquisite work. So Jenny, to get ready to be inspired. Jenny, thank you for being here. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Haley. This is really a charming opportunity to share with everyone this um, somewhat hard medium. I'm not gonna take you through a step-by-step -step today. I'm gonna take you through a, a slideshow that'll have some video, that'll have some still, but more of a narrative. So um, you're welcome to take notes, but know that the PDF version of this will be sent to you. So you'll have my notes and, and the entire 
slideshow. Slide show. So without further ado, let's, let's get through and get on. This is my art innovation talk. I, uh, if I can just make sure you can hear me, can somebody weigh in for me, please? Can you hear me? We can hear you, Jenny. Okay. Um, you need to um, share your screen so we can see the presentation. Oh, thank you. And I'm sorry. And share screen. Share. Okay, now can you see the slideshow? Yes, Great. we can. Thank you. Okay, well, I'm sorry about that little mishap, um, but you can see there, you can get, um, you can connect with me through my email, uh, Facebook, my website. So to begin with, we'll give you a short little studio tour. I don't have a, a, a large studio. I'll be talking about silk painting. Um, Haley's already explained to you how to use the chat option for your questions or comments. And of course, if you see something or hear something that just you go, oh, that's, that's what I wanted to hear today. Just give me a thumbs up because we're all trying to do everything for you and for each other. Uh, we are innovative artists. We're experimenting with all kinds of things. And this is an attempt to tell our story. This is a little bit of my story and my journey. And perhaps you'd like to share your story with ISEA, just let them know. So for classes, questions, ideas, contact me through the ISEA website or contact me through email and you'll have all of that information. I am an ISEA signature member and I connected with um, ISEA in September of 2003. So I've been around a little while uh, and just am always inspired by what I see happening with, within. So welcome to my studio. You can sort of see as I go around my studio, I have to be very organized because I explore a variety of mediums. There's my library, um, catalogs, my sewing machine, Twyla Tharp, the creative habit. <laughs> we'll talk more about that in a second. There's my horizontal file. So I need to have my sketchbooks, my wall, uh, watercolor paper, and there's my messy watercolor processing. And that's also where I do my silk painting. My laptop, my calendar. I go through two years at a time. That's my planning calendar. A little crazy sketch. So that's my, that's my studio. And when I was a little girl, um, my father helped me develop my bedroom into my studio and I had uh, sawhorses and old doors lining the perimeter of my bedroom and I called it my studio. Um, my workstations haven't changed that much. I still have my flat surfaces to work on and I can take a piece fluidly throughout, throughout my studio. So there was a workstation dedicated to watercolor, sewing, writing, composing uh, poetry, making dioramas. I still make dioramas. I love dioramas. Uh, little snippets of paper. And I also have a workstation dedicated to creating my original greeting cards, which are um, distributed and ordered throughout the world. I think it's important to capitalize on who those influencers are in our lives. For me, um, I was fortunate to have 
my father, who was an architect, so I sat at his um, drafting table with, with a T-square and a triangle, practicing my lettering. So I, I do a lot of writing with all of my work. Um, so architects and builders, very savvy business women, a textile artist, poets, musicians, theater, performance, set design, costuming, interior designers. I think it's really pretty fun to note that my dad, who flew for part of his architectural firm, uh, they built churches after World War II, and the guys all flew all over the country designing these very contemporary open air um, churches. And my dad wanted me to go with him one year to New York City. He took me down into Greenwich Village and he said, oh, there is this beat poet. We have to just go down to, to, um, to the village and, and hear him. And so I had my little tam on and I had my black outfit, not too different than what I'm wearing today. Black is my favorite color. Um, and we went down into, the, into this one performance area and this guy was just, just doing all this really cool um, poetry. And it turns out that was Bob Dylan before Bob Dylan was Bob Dylan, the Bob Dylan. Uh, I think, also, one of the biggest influencers was um, who gave me a very hearty dose of discipline demanded by Jenny Peruca. She was my 4-H leader. It was with her help and consistent, um, a consistent nudging, she saw something in me. And it was really great. She took me to the National 4-H competition. So I, I went through local, regional, state, and then up into national. And once you get into nationals, they sit you down on a stage with your garment and completely deconstruct your garment. They then give you a sewing machine, a needle and thread and say, now reconstruct your garment so that they could tell it and make sure that you are the one, were the one who built that garment. I got a blue ribbon. <laughs> it was just, it's still my, one of my favorite um, competitions and, and joys. So we, you saw a little bit of the front cover of Twyla Tharp's book, The Creative Habit. And in that creative habit, um, she's talking about how to really start thinking. And for her, the whole concept is you need an idea. So for me, um, that idea is something that is so unique to how I think. Um, I'm dyslexic. So for me, part of that is trying to make sure that I am communicating correctly with my with my audience, no matter what medium I'm choosing. But I love how she put this. The idea, however minuscule, is what turns the verb of dance, paint, write, sculpt into a noun. Paint into painting, sculpt into sculpture, write into writing, dance into dance. And I really have that written on the forehead of my, my heart. I also work typically in a series. And in this photograph, um, it might not be easy to read this photograph, but that's actually a drawing that I did onto a piece of silk backed by something called Solvi, which is a dissolvable interfacing that I um, helped um, invent with the United States Dairy Association uh, several decades ago. And I dropped the feed dog on my sewing machine. The feed dog are those little, um, little feet that push your, your, your um, material through, through the sewing machine. So if you drop them, you can then 
what I call paint with thread. But it doesn't come without scratching around a whole lot and making sure you know what you're doing. In this short little video, which I think is going, whoop, sorry. Hopefully that, well, um, technology works. Sometimes it doesn't. I'll go back real quick and see if, there we go. So in this short video, um, I'm sort of illustrating how I work. So painting started for me with a true propensity for learning when I was a young child about the age of 10 or 12. And I was able to take coursework through the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. The textile uh, professor was from India. So she grew up with all of these textile processes. You can see just gentle touching of the dye onto the silk. You can also see that it stops at certain points. And that's what we call the resist or the guta. In silk painting, you have to somehow stop the dye from spreading out onto the silk fibers. With this professor, she, she was just incredible. She showed and taught silk painting, batik, indigo dyeing, um, she even taught us how we hand carved blocks of wood and we understood horizontal and vertical um, printing so that you could use that to print on fabrics or wallpapers or even by printing on um, your, your walls. And you just have to have a very strong patience and perseverance because you will fail at a lot of these processes. There I am painting again on a short um, video clip. And you can really, you can see that, that I'm really scrubbing this um, silk. Those are little drops of batik wax. So between guta and the batik wax, you can create all kinds of textures, patterns. These are two silk panels side by side. And I want to encourage you to work in a series. Um, it can be as simple as, as two pieces side by side, but as you're working through them, you develop a continuity, a synergy. I taught graphic design for um, a number of years. And in the same, same way with graphic design, if you're working across a brochure or um, a product line, you have to pull synergetic colors, textures, um, concepts throughout the entire thing so that you do have, have a great synergy. This is a silk scarf. I just love this. Um, this particular scarf because after the entire process of silk painting, dyeing, um, uh, steam setting the dye, removing any excess dye, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the colors are just amazing. They are so, so vibrant. Here I am painting another little tiny piece. I, I thought you might be interested in just seeing, sometimes you just touch the tip of the brush to the silk. You don't have to scrub and you can see the negative spaces of white in between all of the colors. Those are actually, that's the guta. Guta is a um, rubber, uh, from the rubber tree plant in South America. So it's just 
um, harvested much like um, maple syrup is harvested from the maple trees. And you can see then all that negative space, those are the little dams that occur um, once, you've, once you've painted. This is also, um, Haley and I had a great conversation the other night about testing, 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 making sure that you, you test your work, you wash, you rinse, you repeat your process so that you don't get caught um, with your pants down, so to speak. And you can see as I'm pulling these pieces out of my steamer, all that newsprint is in between each piece of silk and that newsprint collects and isolates any of the dye that might have um, occurred. And you can see the vivid colors that, that happen. You can also see different um, patterns, different. Here's a very contemporary piece that could either be a silk scarf or a, um, or a banner. So moving on, here's my inexpensive and mobile teaching steamer setup. It's a piece of galvanized stovepipe, which you can get at any hardware store or um, big box store. And then you would, need, you would need a plethora of other things. Um, but you just need to make sure that wherever you set up, you're very safe. You're out of the view of people who are looking, um, children, pets, because if that stovepipe falls over, it will probably burn somebody. So you have to be very careful and very aware. Dharma Trading and Dick Blick are two of the greatest um, resources. You can go there and get all kinds of ideas on what kinds of silks. There's habitai silk, there's different weaves and wefts of habitai silk, there's silk charmeuse, there's silks and silks. So uh, Dharma trading is just my go-to. And there we go. So I just want to talk a smidgen about this piece. This is on silk charmeuse. I use a French dye. I also use what's called a no-flow medium. And the no-flow medium is kind of like Elmer's glue. You paint it on, you let it dry, and then you don't need to use a resist of any kind. You don't need any wax. You don't need any um, guta. But what I do is oftentimes I'm drawing on the matte side of a piece of freezer paper. I can then take that freezer paper back to the studio and um, I transfer the design onto my silk. Then I stretch the silk onto a frame. I apply a small bit of Guta resist or, or the um, no flow medium. And I'm taking French dyes. They are highly pigmented, specially formulated scientifically to not just lay on top of the silk as you would a canvas and paint, but rather in that silk steaming process that dye actually bonds with the silk fibers and becomes part of the silk. Sometimes I use a hair dryer in my left hand while I'm drying the silk and I'm painting at the same time. So I'm very ambidextrous. But there's more. <laughs> so obviously that could be the, the end of your process or you can take it, I often take, oftentimes I'll take it into the sewing machine, drop the feed dock, start embellishing. And in this piece, you can see, um, I even use bits of uh, um, 
Trapunda work. I am, I am just hyper embellishing this, this particular piece. I even created a little silk tutu for her um, to, uh, to enhance her, her, um, her, I feel like she's moving because of all of the trapunda work and, and uh, stitching around her. Um, but I started with a live model and I would encourage you if you don't do any live model drawing to do that. And what is so cool, if you've watched any of the Tokyo um, Olympic games, you may have heard the athletes using the phrase iron sharpening iron. And for me, I've taken that to that um, creative artistic sense where creativity sharpens creativity. And that's what I call this, this um, short presentation. This is again, a figure on silk. Um, I moved away from the use of the guta, rather I'm using um, batik wax with the Tingjing tools, the brushes, a melting pot, um, a temperature related um, hot plate, all the dyes. And the, you know, honestly, I say in here, the possibilities are endless and they really are. Here's a uh, piece that's finished and you can see the white negative lines in the figures. Same thing here, and uh, this is an award-winning six foot long silk panel, which is also hanging over uh, my shoulder here. Again, figurative work. So I teach, I, I teach silk painting, I teach watercolors, and I call that from the bottom up. So we really go through all of the um, papers. What are your paints? What kind of brushes do you use? What kind of water do you use in your watercolor painting? Um, everything uh, plays on each other. I do um, urban sketching with pen and ink and watercolor washes. And then I also teach the value scale and more importantly, how to use your value scale. I have one-on-one -on -one technique coaching. I conduct workshops, residencies, um, speaker and some very intentional consulting. And I think it's kind of a cool, did you know uh, that science has finally revealed that the brain sees tonal value and chroma, which is your color, from two different areas in your brain. I think it's really fascinating because your brain registers value before it registers color. So your value scale is something so critical for you to, um, to understand. But I also, beyond mastering your craft, whatever medium you're using, I think it's just really exciting and critical to seek out feedback during this artist's journey. Your feedback from fellow artists can sometimes create breakthrough opportunities. And I hope we can meet up at symposiums, at workshops, a class or coaching for you to keep pushing your creative edge. And this quote came from one of my students as her daughter was preparing to enter college on a full ride as a music major, which is just, you know, like top of the cream to the cream. And her daughter was so concerned, but her mom said, never compare your beginning with someone else's middle. I think that's um, a really, really cool uh, bit of advice. Um, I currently have a series. These pieces are worked on clayboard and I paint with a credit card. I'll be demonstrating this along with um, two other artists in the Yes Trio in, um, at the symposium coming up in September. I really want you to uh, realize where my thinking comes from 
with experimental work. I think about the hypothesis, the experiment, and the analysis. Um, and so for a deeper dive into this particular body of work, by the time next week comes around, you'll be able to log on to the McLean County Arts Center for a short video interview on where, where this particular body of work came from, smokestacks. So I'm gonna ask you a question. How do you recharge? How do you balance art making with your work, with your life? Um, I'll be real honest, I don't do that very well. And so I'm looking for, for help in trying to understand other artists who are working artists. How do you balance your life? Then who is your go-to for construct, constructive critique? And critique is really, really important. I always look for objective critique, not subjectives. Anybody can say, oh, that's interesting. So then I come back with, tell me how you respond to this, to this work. What is your response? Oh, and then it just opens up that objective dialogue. So how are you going to successfully achieve outcomes with your commissions? How do you set up meetings with curators? How do you scratch around for innovative experimental techniques? How do you collaborate with other creatives? So if I ask you that, I'm gonna come back with how I approach all of the above. And I'm going to leave you with just two words. And I think they're my valuable life lesson. I show up. Thanks for showing up today. Um, I'm going to throw this, stop sharing and throw this back to Haley. You're muted, Haley. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jenny, for that wonderful presentation. And before we get to questions, if everyone could give Jenny a silent round of applause, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we do have several questions from our chat box. So we'll start from the top. We've got a, a fellow Twyla Thorpe fan. So that's exciting. Right. Um, and as we're asking, you can, there's still time for you to submit your question if you haven't done so. Um, you mentioned the resist, the Gouda, Batik Wax, and No Flow. How do those, be, um, how do those, how are those removed from the silk? Ah, great. During the silk steaming process, those actually dissolve into the paper that you've, the newsprint that you've put on there. And oh, I should make a comment. Don't use newspapers that have been printed. Use blank newsprint. Otherwise, you'll end up with, um, with the words from the newspaper onto your silk permanently. <laughs> How do I know that? <laughs> <laughs> Through experience, probably. Um, we have a comment about someone enjoying the freedom uh, of the line in your sketches. Ooh, that's fun. Uh, you mentioned commissions. Can you tell us about what kind of commissions you've done? Wow. Um, well, over the course of maybe the last 20 to 30 years, 
everything from, I, I try to connect with other professionals um, and try to solve their business problem with an artistic creative solution mm. by working with architects and interior designers. They have specific business needs. An architect has this magnificent um, vestibule in a bank, but everything is hard. The interior designer is faced with how to soften or capitalize on a softening effect. So working with that, um, with that interior designer to um, create long, sometimes 20, 30 foot long panels hmm. uh, that are suspended from the ceilings. And so just the natural uh, airflow causes the silk to dance much like a landscape architect. So um, a landscape architect has hardscape and softscape, things that move with the air. Mm -hmm. And so that's one way, but it's in knowing how to create, um, write up a creative brief. We can talk about that if you um, want to dive further, give me a call, email. <laughs> um, but a creative brief is an outline that allows you to not only ask the right questions, but get the right answers and know what kind of a target you need to hit. A commission work should always um, have a target so that you're not just throwing darts into the air and hoping somebody likes it at the end. Okay, yes. Um, how do you switch back and forth between so many mediums? Does one technique inform the other? Do you concentrate on one medium for a while and then switch back to another? What a great question. Mm -hmm. um, because I have all these sawhorses, these flat surfaces, um, yes, something hits me, an idea forms, and I go back to my research. I go back to my note taking. Um, and then I take those notes and say, can I apply this piece of, these pieces of information <laughs> onto silk and I'm faced with that challenge right now. I have, a, um, I have a solo exhibition at the Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art in 2023. So I have two years mm -hmm. to develop this body of work. I'm going to be sharpening against my own creative processes, mm -hmm. um, knowing watercolor, those art, those water mediums mm -hmm. are very similar when you translate them over to um, silk. I hope okay. that gives a little bit of an insight. I think so. Yeah, thank you. Um, we have someone interested in learning about those beautiful, vibrant dyes that you use. And why did you choose them? Or did they choose you? Ooh. <laughs> You know, I guess in a way, when sort of like what you and I talked about the other day, um, Haley, to ex always do a test run. And I was not satisfied years ago. I was not satisfied with some of the um, more inexpensive dyes. They just didn't have the vibrancy that I was looking for. Um, so I started, started looking all over the world, uh, and French dye is very expensive, but you don't use very much. So I have bottles of French dye that I've gone through, and then I have bottles of French dye that I still have half of a, half of a bottle full after maybe three or four years. 
obviously if I'm gonna do a 20 foot long panel or 10 20 foot long panels, yeah. I'm gonna need to um, have the best quality that I can afford. Um, the other piece to that are the um, Japanese Noren, which um, Mary Lou and I talked about several weeks ago. The Noren is a panel that is suspended in the doorway of a Japanese home or business. Mm -hmm. And as you pass under and through the silk panel, you leave behind the energy there and you go to the energy in front of you. So those also, because they're backlit and front lit, it needs to be powerful um, colors. So precious, and I love that. Um, okay, let's see. How do you actually transfer from wax paper to silk? Ah. It's, it's the old um, light box theory. Um, if I have a piece of paper, the, the um, freezer paper, I actually um, iron the silk onto the shiny side of the, wet, the um, freezer paper then turn it over, put it up on a light box, the window, a big, a big window works great and transfer that either with guta, with wax or a um, dissolvable fiber pen. So it's a transfer pen hmm. and it only lasts for about 24 hours. So by the time I've gotten that process done. Then I attach my silk to my frame and then quickly start applying the guta or, or wax or whatever it is, um, no flow medium. I love all of the stages in this process. Um, we have time for one more question. Uh, Oh, and I'll make an extra comment. Someone had said they were just talking uh, with their ADHD coach today about showing up every day to do creative Yay! play and work. Woo! Yay, okay. show up. Yes. Um, and have you ever tried acrylic as a water medium? Any tips? Um, yes, <laughs> but you have to be careful that if you, acrylic wants to have a medium to make it flow without losing the intensity of the pigment. Or if what you're after is losing the intensity of the pigment, you can um, put a couple of drops of water, of acrylic paint in with water you're not gonna get the same intensity, but, but again, what is it that you're wanting to accomplish? Mm -hmm. It's a great question and it takes practice, practice, practice. And so take you notes, you know, do your samples, take notes, make sure, you know, if a one to two part ratio, then, then you've got your, your um, you've got your thought process recorded. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for the questions. Thank you, Haley. Thank you, Jenny. Um, your Jenny, your your presentation was outstanding, and the question and answer session was phenomenal. You guys had some great questions out there. So, if you want to learn more about Jenny's art um, and her art practice, please contact her um, by email and her, direct, her, it's in our directory, our ISAA directory. You can find her name listed there. The Art Innovation Talks Committee is looking for presenters. So if you or someone you know, either a member or a non-member are interested in presenting to our group, please contact me, Kimberly Gill, and my email is 
also listed in our ISEA directory. So lastly, we'll be mailing out a um, survey to each of you. We'd really appreciate it if you could complete it. Um, we really value your input as we work hard to provide quality presentations to the group. Along with that, Jenny is uh, generous enough to include a PDF of her presentation, and we will have a Zoom, um, a Zoom presentation link on our YouTube channel. Um, it'll be up for at least one month, so you can look it over again. Uh, recommend it to your ISEA member friends so they can view it um, at their convenience. So thank you, everyone. Um, we look forward to seeing you in November when we'll have our next Art Innovation Talk. And in the meantime, keep creating your wonderful work, share it with the world, and have a fabulous day. Thank you all for joining in. Bye now. Thank you.